Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining me for prayer time. I'm Pastor Mark, and I hope you've had a wonderful day. We had an incredible day at the church. God was present and challenged a lot of us. We had wonderful prayer times. I want to thank our local board of administration, great group of volunteers who have served our church so faithfully, really over the last two years, because we weren't able to have an election last year. We were bogged down into some really heavy stuff. And so I'm very thankful for all of them and for the hard work that they put into our meeting today as we look ahead to what God has in store for our church at Gold Hill Wesleyan. But I trust that you've had a good weekend. And if you're like me, there are times when we open our mouths and say things we wish we had never said. I'm, uh, of course, the only guy in a family of four, and I have two daughters and my wife, and I don't know how many times they've told me, Dad, filter, filter. You need to watch out what you say because these are things that you probably shouldn't have said, whether they're embarrassing to them. Sometimes pastors have to be very careful, especially when they're preaching and use illustrations that they don't embarrass the family. But sometimes we just say things we wish we hadn't said on a serious note. I'm kind of kidding there a little bit, but there are times whenever we do say things, we regret saying them, we wish we'd have never said them. Everybody feels that way. And the beauty of having that sense of common ground is that God knew that we would feel this way also. As a matter of fact, he knew it would be a common occurrence. And Jesus is going to talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, he's going to give us an example that I'm going to talk about in the Gospel of Matthew. But I also want to look into the book of James. Before I do that, though, I want you to just kind of take a moment and ask yourself how your talk is, how your speech is. Because, you know, there are a lot of people who claim Christianity but to hear them talk and some of the things they say, uh, it's very hard that, to find them being a good witness for the effort of uh, the kingdom of God. So first, let me look at James. It's uh, in the first chapter of James, looking at verse 19, okay? And James is talking to disciples. See, you could apply it right to our lives today because I think it was written for that day, but it's very easy to lift out what James says and apply it to a challenge for us to grow in our knowledge of Jesus and in the way he'd have us to live. It says, my dear brothers and sisters, and basically the church brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Does that sound like you? Oftentimes it doesn't sound like me. Too often I want to speak before I even think about what I'm going to say. Sometimes I jump the gun and get angry and have a knee-jerk reaction when I shouldn't do it, when I should keep my calm. But he says we shouldn't be that way. Verse 20, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Are you an angry person? This is something we need to be careful about because it doesn't produce the kind of righteousness that God desires, James says. Now, there's a such thing as righteous anger. There were times when Jesus got angry, when he would throw over the tables, whenever there were money changers there in the temple. He got upset about those sort of things. There was a righteous anger that we find in Jesus. But I have to believe that Jesus was quite approachable because little children adored him and wanted to be with him. Very unusual for little children to adore someone who's always angry. So we see him talking about the righteousness that God desires. Somebody who's not quick to respond, but someone who's slow to speak, quick to listen, because many times we speak without knowing all of the facts. Verse 21, therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. See, that's what I'm talking about. It seems like there's a lot of people that claim Christ or like to say Christ or talk about Jesus, but they are surrounded with moral filth. And what comes out of their mouth does not really pass the litmus test as to what it means to be a Christian. Now, Jesus was very concerned with what came out of the mouths of believers. He was also being criticized by people by what came out of their mouths in that oftentimes people would claim that Jesus was saying something he never did or he was representing a kingdom he never came to represent. We have a situation like that in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, as a matter of fact, they would even claimed that Jesus was casting out demons by the prince of demons, Beelzebub. And he looked at them and said, you know, how can a kingdom divided against itself stand? It's something we heard Abraham Lincoln quote from this passage when he talked about the United States in the middle of the Civil War. A kingdom divided itself cannot stand. And he was talking about if he represented Satan, then why would he cast out Satan? Now, I want you to look with me at, at this passage that he says, beginning in verse 33 of Matthew chapter 12. Jesus is really giving us a sincere challenge uh, for each of us in what we display on the outside. He says, make a tree good and its fruit will be good, or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized 
by its fruit. Isn't that true? It's awfully, awfully hard to know what's in the heart of someone, but if you are quick to open your mouth, not slow to speak, it's very easy. People can tell a lot about the way that you're feeling and what you're thinking, especially if you're willing to let things settle and for your pondering to sort of filter out what should and shouldn't be said. He goes on, you brood of vipers, because he's talking to the Pharisees who have just criticized him for uh, claiming that he cast out demons by uh, Beelzebub. He says, you brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. And you say, well, I don't really say evil things. Basically, I try not to say anything. Well, see, that's not what God is saying to do either. That's not what Jesus is talking about. There, and, and even James is saying we should be slow to speak. But he says also, though, we should hold to the truth which is in us because it can save us. There is a time to speak. Even the Old Testament tells us there's a time to speak. There's a time for us to testify. There's a time for us to listen and to understand all the facts, though, before we speak. But listen to what Jesus says, because see, I think oftentimes we tend to believe that it doesn't matter what we say, and sometimes we choose not to say anything. Jesus says, verse 35, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. So that's an active verse. You are bringing out good things. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. I want you to listen to what verse 36 says. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Sometimes I think I need to just put that last verse everywhere where I can see it. By your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. What is the power of words? Sometimes we can condemn our children. Sometimes we can be so critical of them that they grow up with great insecurity. Sometimes we can insult our partner, our spouse, uh, our dates, whatever the case may be. Again, bringing up tremendous insecurities. We can do that to people that we encounter regularly, make people think less of themselves because we want to elevate our position. And we think, well, you know, it's just words. Nobody's ever hurt by words, sticks and stones, you know, things like that. And Jesus is telling us here, we need to be careful what we say. These Pharisees are accusing him of something that's not right. And he's not doubting their influence on other people around them in the community. That's something we need to be very, uh, 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 I guess, adapted to, is to know that we have influence in other people's lives. Not just children, not just the simple-minded, but those we encounter when we're at our worst. Therefore, it's so important that we recognize that the idle words, and that's the word that's kind of substituted when you think about the Greek. He talks about empty words. But the Greek is really more of a variant of the idle word. Every idle word, a word that accomplishes nothing, a word that doesn't encourage, a word that doesn't uh, help. It's not a helpful word at lifting people up. Those are the words that we're going to be accountable to as well that we utter. So I want to challenge you in your vocabulary this week. What do you talk about? When do you talk about it? And are people able to... Accept what you say as fruit that's from a good tree? Or is it something that tarnishes and damages your testimony of being a Christian because what comes out is quickly themed, quickly timed because you didn't listen or think it through? And does it sort of color a a bad picture on your testimony? Sort of taint the blood of Jesus because of the words that come out of your mouth before you think about it. Let's watch our words this week. I pray that God will help me. I pray that he'll help you. Let's pray for one another, shall we? Father, I thank you for your word tonight. It's one of those things we need to think about and ponder, not be quick to speak about. Help us in our, uh, just in those that we associate with, those that we interchange with this week, to be people that are quick to listen, slow to speak, And Father, help us to bear good fruit and to overflow with the goodness that's in our hearts by the things that we say. Let people not be quick to judge our Lord and Savior by the bad fruit that comes out too quickly or the anger that we show. Instead, help us to walk in your way, to love your light, to grow and to 
uh, produce fruit that is everlasting. And the way to do it, Father, is to open our hearts to you and let you sow good seed in us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks again for joining me. I hope you have an incredible week, and I hope that you'll uh, make sure that you're praying for your church, for your pastors, and for one another. May God bless.